So let's talk about that. How many of you all have employees that drive on company business? Okay. So if, I, if I'm one of your employees and I get a, a DUI, how are you going to find out about it? I'm sorry? DMV check, okay. So how often do you do a DMV check? Okay. Do, do most do that? I mean, pretty much uh, as part of your, your non-hired auto policy in your business insurance package, it's probably required at least once a year, okay, for the people that, that you think of as drivers, okay? Now, do you have people that you ask to go run errands and take their own personal vehicle to go do those errands? Okay, those people drive on company business, okay? So the first thing to think about is to be a little more, um, make it a little more affirmative and put a little more onus on the employee to say, Randy, if you get a DUI, we want you to notify the company anytime you get a moving violation of a serious nature. Okay, why? Because I drive on company business. I'm covered under company policies, uh, business insurance policies that provide coverage for that. Wouldn't you as the employer want to determine if Randy can now still do that part of his job based on the fact that I got a recent DUI? Now, think about the worst case scenario. Even in the, even in the client in the back that said they do the DMVs every three months, Okay, there's still a three-month window there. So, you know, you just do it, do the check yesterday, and I get the DUI today. Okay, we still have that continuing liability that I'm out there driving around, and guess what? I unfortunately plowed through a crosswalk of school children yesterday. Okay, and I was under, under the influence again. Those are things that we can cause employees to identify to us and let us as the employer determine whether or not we should allow them to continue to drive and or what sanctions or restrictions might get applied on them operating in their job. Does that, does that make sense? Okay, so let's talk about the texting. Do you all have any policies in place today that say you shouldn't talk on a cell phone and drive? Okay, or talk on a cell phone unless you're doing it on a hands-free device. Okay, has anybody updated their policy to include the no texting yet? Okay, I see a lot of head shaking no. Okay, and this is what today was kind of intended to, to do that topical awareness raising because these are the kinds of things I think we go back and we start to close, close some of these loopholes on. Okay, so let's go on to the next one here. Okay, and I just made up this, this scenario here, but it says an employee is disgruntled over a company's challenge of, and I put in here, regarding a questionable work-related injury. Okay, so you got a disgruntled employee, basically. Okay, the employee creates a blog and then enjoins current and ex-employees, that's always the fun challenge, ex-employees in this blog to disparage the company. Okay, so you got a, the, the famous one out there is Dell sucks, okay? And that's more consumer driven, okay? If you got a problem with your computer, somebody decided to put up a, a Dell website blog that said I had all these problems with my computer and, and uh, you know, it's kind of the same principle as somebody paints their car yellow and puts a sign on it, I'm driving a lemon, same, same concept, but it's not about your company. Okay, so let's look at this for just a second. Check it out. LinkedIn now has applications you can add to your profile. With WordPress, you can blog and it updates your LinkedIn account. With BoxNet, you can store docs and files. BlogLink lets you connect other blogs to your LinkedIn account. And SlideShare is for you to share, edit, and change presentations. So with all this great technology, how can you protect your important company data? So think about all of the information that an employee in your company, whatever that business is, is involved in, okay? It could be financial records, it could be uh, marketing, it could be sales presentations, 
could be a lot of information about your business. Well, if you get an employee that goes disgruntled and decides to pick up some of these applications in, a, in addition to the standard blog category, this blog, blog link, blog net, uh, actually allows them to connect it to other blogs so that all of a sudden, you know, it just expands and expands the audience that's seeing these negative comments. Now, a, a comment was made earlier about Comcast, and I'm going to defend Comcast slightly here. Uh, Comcast has adopted a program that if someone goes on the net and makes a negative comment about Comcast, I, I don't exactly know the time frame, but within 24 hours, someone from Comcast responds to them to say, we're interested in understanding what your issue is. Okay, and they've, they've actually just won some awards for customer service based on that because they're being proactive in going out. But so think about all the kinds of information again that we have about our company. And you know, a company like Peloton, let me, let me share you my worst nightmare with you. Uh, Peloton houses and controls a great deal of client information. Okay, I've got the holy grail. I've got wet signatures of employees. I've got their socials. I've got their addresses. I've got all the information about their deductions, their families, all those kinds of things. So when identity theft comes knocking, I want to be able to sleep at night. So uh, again, us having all of Peloton systems, data warehoused offsite, uh, redundancy backup, disaster recovery, all those kinds of things are important because of the kinds of information you possess on your clients and on your own employees as well. So uh, this Rutgers incident was kind of really amplified because kids, I mean this was an 18 year old kid, uh, friends took and posted very negative information. It got to blog sites, it got discussed, and in about a 24 to 36 hour window this thing had just exploded off the, off the map to the point that, that this particular kid couldn't take it anymore. And so when you start to see disparaging comments, and oftentimes it can be by ex-employees, okay, you still want to have a mechanism in place to go back and say, we take this seriously, this is confidential information that you gained while working for the organization, and we reserve the right to protect that, okay? Questions, comments? Yes? Well, I think it's interesting that you've juxtaposed this presentation with the one on trust. <laughs> <laughs> because having spent 20 years in the HR business, I don't think you can write policies to cover this stuff. And, and the more you try, the more people will tend to try to find loopholes mm -hmm. and ways around them. So, I mean, I think it does ultimately get back to trust and people using good judgment. And, but you know, I'm not gonna spend my time roaming around LinkedIn every month checking out the names of key employees to see if they're out looking for jobs. So, it's not my job. I understand. Would you find that information interesting to you if, if, it, if it came to your attention that your top performer, okay, you had a, we had a, a lean period of uh, pay increases, okay, so your top performer did a great job, didn't get a great increase, would it bother you if that information came to you? How would you deal with it? it what would bother me is that I didn't know about it because I didn't have a trusting good relationship with that employer that, or my manager didn't and and that we didn't know through a good performance management process sure. that that person was unhappy or it was time for them to move on in their career. So how many times do you think in a uh, performance review where the end result is I got a, you know, you got a great review, you know, by the way, you know, it's not going to result in any financial uh, compensation to go with it. How many times do you think the person says, well, screw you, I'm out of here? Or how many times do you think they quietly say thank you and then decide how to deal with their career on a personal level? More the latter. 
Yeah. yeah. I, yeah I'm, not, I'm not naive. Yeah, I understand. And, and happen, we're, we're talking about one of the scenarios that we've actually got on, on uh, view here today uh, because it's happening, okay? Studies are showing that our best employees are hunkered down during the recession, okay? And a study that came out, I think, three weeks ago said that 52% of top performers were thinking about making a move as soon as the recession was over. Okay, scared to do so in the interim, but thinking about doing it after. Uh, you know, I've had clients before that uh, actually requested to know when they had resumes of certain levels of employees that they found or, or were posted out on job boards. And in the early days, there weren't as many security levels in those to where uh, you know, again, it can be an effective tool if we know how to use it uh, to get back to people and, and start to, you know, build the additional trust necessary to find out what their motivators are. Okay? This next one uh, talks about cyber attacks, and this, are, this, are, this is your company systems that are being attacked through the use of personal social media. Okay, does that make sense? So things like spams, things like phishing, things like malware attacks that come through your company systems and the entree point is your employee that's on your system tweeting or going to their Facebook page, things of that nature. 25% of all companies have been the target of spam, phishing, or malware attacks. Studies show that these attacks are on the rise and are more complex than ever. The bad guys are using social media sites like Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and MySpace to gain access to your company's electronic systems. Now I'm told that the interaction that comes with this is where they really gain access to your systems. Okay, so uh, kind of be the, the similar equation to a virus. You know, something comes in as a virus, doesn't do anything unless it's opened, okay? Well, it's using these tools as the opening device for folks to hack into your company systems through those mechanisms. So it's, it's becoming ever, ever more popular at this point, okay? <clears throat> personal access to any of these things while they're on company computers? Well, imagine that some of these things can be accessed through their phones, okay? So uh, you have to think in terms of the securities that you have in place in terms of your systems uh, to know how these things would actually impact your systems if it came through that way. Um, you know, again, I think there's draconian views that say I don't want my employees to use, uh, you know, company systems for personal business for any reason. I, I don't think that's real practical, okay? Uh, so I think you have to come to a balance, and I think you have to communicate what that balance is to set an expectation so that it's not okay for Betty to spend four hours a day running her eBay business okay, on company time, uh, and, and we'll talk about that in just a minute, because there is the use of company time and how much company time. We talked a little bit about that before to say breaks and, and lunches. Um, so I, again, I think you have to understand your company systems and their security levels and how it deals with some of this, okay? Uh, employee retention. This is exactly what I was talking about before, um, and, and I'm just going to play this one. This is Jane again, who is their top sales manager. You know Jane and her boss Dan. Jane is one of the most talented sales managers in the company. For years, Jane has been easy to work with and gets results. Her work and effort is one of the main reasons this company is doing as well as it is. However, Jane just got a performance evaluation today. All high marks, but no pay raise. You just found out that Jane changed her status on LinkedIn and started a job search for a company that will reward her efforts. 
What can you do to keep this talent in your company?